All week, we've seen how some businessmen, including Edwin Edwards, got around state health rules to make millions. They did it by obtaining certificates of need for new hospitals and nursing homes. The certificates allow the owner to claim lucrative government reimbursements for building costs. Edwards and his associates traded them for stock in big development chains, then sold the stock for cash. Those tactics helped result in needless hospital beds that have driven up the cost for health care. Two of Edwards' associates in some of the deals were James Wiley and Ron Falgu, partners in Health Services Development Corporation. The Metairie firm specialized in obtaining certificates of need. We invited Wiley and Falgu to answer our questions about their involvement. They declined to respond, but their lawyer did. Former Baton Rouge U.S. Attorney Don Beckner says his clients acted within the law. I made an independent review and study of what I don't believe to be all the facts in this case. And I do not think that a criminal offense has been committed by anyone. Governor Edwards also denies any wrongdoing. I am satisfied that as a matter of law, I was authorized to do what I did. But federal prosecutors say they are looking into possible bribery, extortion, racketeering, and fraud. Edwards says he has been told that he is a target of the investigation. A New Orleans federal grand jury aims to decide within weeks whether prosecutors have enough evidence against the governor for a court trial. If the governor becomes a defendant charged with a crime, it could seriously weaken his considerable influence over government here at the state capitol. It's the off-season for state politics. The House and Senate chambers remain quiet and vacant. But soon, these rooms come alive. The legislature convenes here in two and a half months. For better or worse, the governor's possible indictment could change the course of business, and it may affect you. Ladies and gentlemen, Many officials rely on the governor's leadership when making their own decisions about the state's business, how it collects and spends your tax dollars. But some politicians say the governor has already become preoccupied with the federal investigation in New Orleans. For those people who, who look to, as we say, the fourth floor, which is where the governor's office is located, for guidance, I, I think they have been uh, generally without guidance uh, in the recent past. With the state facing a budget crisis, some officials say the prospect of a governor on trial is the last thing Louisiana needs now. Well, it, it, it would be a very devastating thing. If the governor is indicted, it's going to cause a serious impact on how he is going to want to address himself to the problems. I would have to say that an indictment would weaken him from the standpoint that he wouldn't be able to devote all of his energies to governmental needs and to the legislature. As far as, as I'm concerned, that it would be one of the worst things that ever happened to the citizens of Louisiana. That they have uh, at the leadership helm right now one of the best people for bringing Louisiana through some very difficult times. Some politicians believe the governor's possible indictment could strengthen his opponents here at the state capitol and open the door for a new Republican administration. But the two men next in line are both Democrats. If indicted and convicted, Edwards could be forced to leave office before the end of his term. Under ordinary circumstances, Lieutenant Governor Bobby Freeman would become governor. But Freeman acknowledges that he is also under federal investigation in a separate case involving campaign contributions. If for some reason Freeman must also leave office, Secretary of State Jim Brown would be next in line to become governor. But many political observers believe that neither of these men could exert the same leadership or wield as much power as Edwards. For his part, Edwards continues to maintain the poise he showed as he entered federal court for testimony before the grand jury. Do you have anything to hide? Oh, yes, but not in connection with this investigation. <laughs> Edwards says he has survived seven previous grand jury investigations, and he predicts this case, like others before it, will close in his favor. U.S. Attorney John Volt says we should know sometime this month whether the governor must stand trial. In the meantime, the state is reviewing how it approves certificates of need for new hospitals and nursing homes. Health officials are tightening up the rules. The statewide health coordinating council has drawn up some amendments to the state health plan. Among other things, the rules would require that backers of a project prove they intend to build it. 
Officials hope the requirement discourages businessmen like those who work with James Wiley and Ron Falgoob from obtaining certificates and trading them for profit. The new rules make it more difficult to get government money for building unneeded hospitals and nursing homes in Louisiana. But the rules do not apply to projects already underway. For years, Louisiana will be stuck with too many empty hospital beds. Somebody will have to pay for them, and most likely, it will be you. With photographer Brian Pucas, Taylor Henry Channel 4 Eyewitness News.